Here's promises that a 16 year long of L is repaid with the payment at the end of each year, okay, during the first eight years of the payment of 100, okay, and during the final eight years of the payment of 300. Interest is charged on a loan at an annual effective rate of five such that. So this is another way of saying that the interest rate is above, is greater than 0.3. Now, at the, after the first payment of 100 is made out, the interest will tell the customer. OK, so let's find out what the outstanding principal is at time one. Well, we know that L plus 0.5, but we have to set this term equal to something, right? So another way to find out the only bounds at time one is that I can take the accumulation of the loan by one effective interest rate and uh, subtract 100 to signify a paying out the loan we can sort of like. So this would represent the outstanding balance of the loan. Then I could set it equal to L plus 25. Another way that I could do this is that I can do the uh, principal plus interest equals uh, payment concept when I can just take uh, the interest of, well, on top of the loan, we have to pay interest expense. So times the interest rate by LI uh, equaling the payment at occurring at time one, right? And I just subtract this to the other side and find out that the principal at time one equals 100 minus i uh, to the L. And from then on, from getting that principal, we take the uh, initial principal or loan of L and we subtract this principal from the initial loan, right? We said it. We also said this for L plus But I think that this method is much easier, but we still get the same as before. So let's just draw this one here. So L plus L is minus one minus one hundred equals L plus twenty-five. So we get rid of the L's, right? Then we get the L I equals one. Now, another thing here is that we know we notice that L I L from high is 1.5. Now, the thing here is that we want to find out the actual balance of the immediately after the eighth annual payment of 100 that has been made, right? So, well, we know that um, if we were to shift uh, this I to the other side, we would immediately get the, instead of denoting the amount of the loan as L, we can also denote the amount of the loan as 125 to this I. Then we would have to set it up uh, to another different loan equation to uh, find the I, right? So we could look at this and we can realize that, hey, maybe we could do we could uh, set this equal to 100. A loan. We could set the loan equal to 100 A to the 8, right? Because it's looking for the plus uh, 300 A 8 I times uh, B to the 8. Right, so that's one way. Another way is that we could set it to 300A16 while subtracting uh, 200 a to, to compensate for the uh, 
missing other 200 that is occurring here. Now, the solution seems to use this as a uh, rough estimate of the loan instead of using it as the traditional way. And I think it's because um, we try to prevent using this discount factor as much as possible. Because if we set these types of factors equal to each other, we're going to get some sort of complicated equation that we can So I'm just going to set 125 uh, over i equal to x, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to erase my screen. Okay. Erase my screen. Right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand these. I'm going to do 300 times 1 plus, oh, uh, sorry. Times uh, 1 minus v to the 16 over i minus 200. 1 minus v to the 8 over i, right? And we set it equal to 1.5 i. Now, the thing we notice here is that we could get rid of this thing. And we could also maybe factor out a hundred, get rid of these zeros, and then maybe divide this. So I think so. If I either that if I do 125 divided by 100, 1.25, and then I could distribute here. So three minus three v to the 16 minus two plus two v to the eight, and once I do that, I'm gonna subtract these one. And uh, let's see what I'm going to do. Let's put that over here. And then another thing is that uh, I'm going to bring this to the other side, right? So that would mean that I am. So if I erase this and then put it over here, it's going to be. Uh, Negative three to the sixteen plus two v to the eight uh, minus uh, point twenty five. If I did one minus one point twenty five, right? Now I would get. Um, now this looks as something as a quadratic equation, and we know how that's a way to really traditional in the setting a variable. Equal to x for and then solve these types of problems. So I'm seeing them set b to the a equals x, right? Oh, look, we see here that there's some similarity that we're dealing with. So let's fix that later. So I'm just going to do negative 3x squared plus 2x minus. I'm going to put this in a quadratic equation. I'm going to do uh, negative 2 plus or minus radical uh, 2 squared minus 4 a c over 2 a. Now I'm going to solve. So if I want to input this whole thing in the calculator, I can do. I'll get one. 
So I will try to get negative two plus or minus one over negative six. Now there are two ways to solve this. So if I do negative two plus one, I would get one over six as one possibility. And if I do negative two minus one, I would get negative three over negative six as a possibility, which is also one half. Now, both of these are positive, so that's good. But now, this question says that it's looking for a v to the 8 factor that is uh, greater than 0.3. So this fraction is less than 0.3 for sure. So we are going to use 1 half as our answer to find whatever we're looking for. So once we set 1 half equals to v to the 8, I'm just going to expand this a bit and I'm going to expand it to this, right? Now I'm just going to cross multiply by 2. I'm going to get rid of this and set this equal to 2. Now I'm going to move this 8 to the other side, 1 point, and also I'm going to subtract 1 point to get 1 minus 2. So now, um, We now find out that if we were to solve this, we would find out that i will equal to 9.05%, right? Now, once we've gotten our interest rate, and we want to find out what the outstanding balance is going nearly after the eighth annual payment of 100 has made. Well, what does it really mean for the, it to be an outstanding balance? Up until time eight, it seems like all of the 100s have been paid, right? And uh, the outstanding balance would just signify what is left of what needs to be paid out. So now at time eight, you look at the question that once it's after time eight, we start doing payments of uh, 300, which means that we need a meet a present value equation that signifies the outstanding loan balance at time eight. Right? So with our interest rate of 9.05, interest rate of 9.05, we're gonna get that the outs the conclusion for the outstanding balance at time eight is what is left that hasn't been paid out of 300A, the eight years that we haven't booked, the other eight years that we haven't booked this one yet, and we input 9.05% balance from the interest rate, right? So if we were to put this in that quantity here, we would set this as payment, a negative 300 as payment, a as the rate of 9.05 as the interest rate, we lost by nine, and we'll end up getting. One six five seven three three six as the count as the answer on our uh, TBM calculator. One six five seven three three six. So we were to look at our answer, we'll see that.